Join me, Melanie Hall, for digital and social media marketing insights. This episode is brought to you by Hall.co, my agency. We provide programs for all budgets and all skill sets. Visit us at Hall.co. Thanks, John, for making the time to chat to me today. Thank you. Good to see you again. I'm really interested in your thoughts on digital marketing for our show. And so today we're going to specifically talk about marketing from both an agent and a marketing person's perspective and also um, delve into like what your thoughts on digital media mm. and social media and the like. Very good, looking forward to it. What's your favourite social media platform and why? Uh, look, a, a few. I personally don't use social media for my persona, but from the business perspective, I'm a huge fan. And from an educational, as a learner, I'm a huge fan. So I get a lot of information off Twitter. Mm -hmm. I follow a lot of who I think are great entrepreneurs and, and, and business people and, and just people in general. So I get a lot of information there. YouTube was probably my go-to platform. So I uh, every day I would be early in the morning if I when I go to the gym on the treadmill, I will walk for 40 minutes and I'll watch YouTube for 40 minutes, generally speaking. And once obviously YouTube, the algorithms pick up the information and the style of content that you like. So all of it starts serving you up. And I listen to interviews, 20, 30 minute interviews, maybe not dissimilar to this and I pick up information and insights there. So I'd say um, high level, Twitter I get a lot of information from. I think um, Daily Fix, YouTube is a big one for me. And how has media in general changed from your viewpoint uh, over the couple of decades that you've been in the industry? I think it's changed more in the last few years than probably the previous 15 from my perspective. And we were just talking a bit off camera that a few years ago it was suggested that things like radio and free-to-air television may not have a future, which I thought at the time it sounded extremist and, and if not alarmist. Because I thought I was watching free-to-air, you know, at night, put, turn on the television and that was the thing. Um, now I would say I get most of my content off YouTube, even from an entertainment perspective or, you, or um, Netflix yep. or Apple TV, a whole range of things. And, and some of that's educational and some of it's pure entertainment. And now for me, um, rather than just the big screen television, you know, on the wall, I get a lot of mine off the iPhone, on the treadmill in the morning or an iPad even in bed or if I'm travelling, I'll just open up the iPad and I'll go on to, the, to my favourite, you know, sort of platforms and channels. So I think that's probably been more so in the last five years than 20. Obviously the, the, the internet's been the biggest, you know, change in the last 20 and REA and Domain and the big platforms have really changed the way real estate's bought and sold in the main. And nowadays, uh, the way that real estate agents market themselves is also changing courtesy of the digital channels. So yeah, I think it's, it's, it's all changing. Where does it go from here is gonna be interesting because it's changed so rapidly. And I think some of the current changes, they actually weren't even available or, or on the radar five years ago. Yeah. So I'm not sure where it's gonna go from here other than more of the same, more digital, faster downloads, more to mobile. I mean, it's gonna, I mean, nowadays, most of my content gets served up on my phone, yep. um, even more than my iPad, just because you've got it with you 24-7 and your phone has become everything. It's become a photo album. It's become a place to make calls, send messages, check emails, uh, watch YouTube, a whole everything now. I like to call it the Swiss army knife because it's it like it's – and I quite often call it my, my – um, camera rather than my phone because that's what I, <laughs> I think of it for mostly. It's really, it's a supercomputer in the palm of your hand mm -hmm. uh, for everyone really, even people that aren't that avid users of technology, if they actually took stock of what they use it for, because even the basic users would use it for phone calls, messages, um, probably have one or two apps, YouTube I think would be for almost everyone, yeah. emails. So yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really prevalent and it's going to become more so. I think it's all equally dangerous as it is because it takes away the boundaries. You used to get in your car, go to work, do work, and then pack up your bag or even your computer, then go home. Whereas yeah. nowadays, there's kind of no borders or boundaries. We're in this switched on economy all the time. 24 seven, you have the ability to check emails and phones and take messages and whatever. So I think there's a level of discipline required also mm -hmm. to make sure you maintain balance um, and life balance and so forth. So I think I think it's, it's kind of, they're both important. You know, it's great that you're you're attached and connected, but it's also dangerous if you don't have some boundaries around it. This episode is brought to you by Hall.co, marketing programs to suit all budgets and skill sets. Visit us at Hall.co. How 
do you power down? And, and you know, what advice could you give to the industry on being able to switch off at the end of the day and not being on that, you know, on twenty four seven? I I have my phone is is much of the time on divert. So I have a number of favourites, which are generally the main business contacts that I have and a couple of personal contacts that um, I've, I don't know how I did it, but somehow I did it so they can ring through to me because I think you can do something where you have a divert your phone calls, accept people on your favourites. So oh. I've done that. So that means that there's like 12 or 15 people that can virtually get me any time yep. and everyone else has got to leave a message mm -hmm. because, you know, again, you become almost too accessible. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a sales agent and you're wanting to speak to a potential buyer or a seller, accessibility is probably really important to you. If you're a principal or a sales leader of a business, sometimes you actually need the space to have meetings and to deal with other issues. So I think you've got to work out what is the right balance for you. I know Bill Maloof, who's one of the most successful agents in Australia, and he spoke at ARIC a few years ago, and one of his key messages was accessibility. He said, I go to a client and I say, right, why don't you ring me anytime, night or day, weekend, Sunday morning, eight o'clock, eight o'clock at night, whatever, and then ring the other agents you're talking to and see who actually you can get through to. And he said, most of the time that gets me a listing because I ring the other four or five agents, they don't get back to them for a few hours, maybe a day or two. And yet Bill was almost always answering his phone. So yeah, it, it's it's kind of, it's got to depend which category you're in. Is it important for you to be accessible most of the time? It also depends where you're in, Mel, I think in your life cycle. Mm -hmm. If you're potentially, but not exclusively, but single, youngish, no commitments, no family, and you want to be 24 seven connected, well, maybe that's okay. I mean, you've got to get sleep and you've got, you should be doing some exercise and hopefully some socialization as well. Yeah. But it's very different if you're there with, with a partner and a family and, and other things, other responsibilities. You actually need to be a little bit. So it's hard to turn your phone off nowadays because everything's connected. Mm. So I think, you know, as I've done with Divert and except for favourites, I think you've got to try and find a way that balances up, that gives people appropriate access to you but doesn't distract you from the other key important things. And that's the beauty of, um, you know, online media where you, I always say you can bottle yourself like a genie and be available 24-7 mm. so that you, because I find that I'm repeating myself and I'm sure you would too, you know, with all the interviews that you do, mm. that you end up saying the same thing over and over. So if you can bottle that in a video and then um, have that available 24-7 and then it's kind of like nurturing people to get closer to where you need them, not just where they need you. Because I find that I'm a bit of an information service if I allow myself to be and I feel like I'm the you know the help yeah. desk on anything social digital and I, and I think Mel there's there's something pleasant about the real real time real person exchange from time to time for sure mm -hmm. and we do both here so in from our training perspective at the moment because um, we've now got offices up and down the east coast of Australia we've got about a hundred offices in in uh, one two three four states and so f for us we, d we still hold monthly sessions in real time, in, in classrooms with new people that have joined. But we also have online content. So if someone can't make the course or in additional content, it's available. Mm -hmm. So I think as, as a company scales or even as a sales agent, I mean, if you're a sales agent and some of our top agents at the moment, they're selling 15 to 20 properties every month. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're really, and, and not just for us, around the country, there's some other great agents too. And do they have a team around them to be able to achieve that? They do. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But what I was just going to, the point I was making there is, Imagine if you've got 15 vendors a month, because some people have got one or two, which is fine, yeah. um, but if you've got 15 or 20, to have to have the same conversation about here's, here's what to expect, here's how to present your home, here's how we're going to deal with offers, here, what other things. So capturing it once on video, and I think video is a really underutilised tool in, in, in the Australian real estate market, both B2C, business to consumer, but also within a business. So if you send out a... a three minute, five minute, 10 minute video to a new starter. Here's our values, here's what we stand for, here's what we recommend to a vendor, even to a buyer coming getting ready for an auction. If you're a successful agent, you've got 20 auctions a month or even six or seven auctions a month, maybe you do a little two minute video to a buyer saying auction's coming up this weekend, here's where it's going to, here's how we recommend, here's what's going to happen, here's the advantage of being the highest bidder, here's how to register or pre-register. So yeah, I think it's I think it's critical. Back to your question, um, yeah, leveraging. I think the best agents going forward are going to be selling a property a day in the very near future. Mm -hmm. Some of our agents are very close to that. Uh, our highest is twenty four in one month, and if you take out kind of the one day a week, most people don't work. That's pretty much a, a, a property a day, yeah. and and we've got a number of people now reaching that level. 
So you can't do everything. You can't be everywhere. Nope. You can't fulfill every role. And, and the metaphor we often use, Mel, here is when you go in and you have a serious medical operation with a, with a world-class surgeon, you don't expect them to be getting the tools cleaned and whatever and anaesthetizing or whatever. They come yeah. in for their job and they have specialists around them. So our top teams are now developing, not, not huge teams. So I'm talking about, so Stefan Bertrand, one of our top guys, he does 15, 16, 17 sales a month. He's got himself, he's got an administrative assistant that handles all the marketing and, and paperwork. And he's got two buyer specialists. Uh, well, one buyer specialist and one buyer specialist that also does listings as well. So he's developed a team of four. And I know Tommy Hector in South Australia also has a similar team structure and he's doing 150 to 200 sales also a year. So I think you, you have to be able to work out as an agent, what is your best value add role? Yep. Um, yes, if you can look over all the marketing, that's helpful. But if you have someone just as good as you to do it, you're probably better in front of potential vendors and potential sellers, sorry, potential buyers. Mm -hmm. So I think you've got to kind of do that. A lot of agents or a lot of human beings have trouble delegating. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's for good reason because they're very good at what they do and they have a good eye for detail on marketing or whatever it might be. And they say, oh, yeah, but I think I can do it better than them. Reality is you probably can, but if you're trying to do that, you can't do that. And if you want to build a business, you need to be talking to the sellers and the best buyers mm -hmm. and you need a process that kind of allows you to focus on that rather than you know, sharpening the utensils. Yeah. And I spoke at your Momentum event, mm -hmm. so kindly got flown around the country. Um, and that was for people in your business that have, you know, they've just reached that 500 GCI yeah. level. And they're, you know, it's where they need to, you know, jump up from being a lone agent or maybe with an offshore assistant to a team. So as you've been talking, I've been thinking about, yeah, process is really important and being really clear on who does what part yeah. of the process. Um, across your team, but also like automation. And we can really use technology, True. both the devices that we have in our palm of our hand and systems and automation and bots and um, technologies that are coming into the fray now. Well, thank you for your time today. Really Pleasure. appreciate answering all my questions Good and I'll chat you. to you again soon. Thanks, Mel. Thank you. Thank you.